So what comes in your mind when somebody says a gene? So if you're like me, then you might think a gene is a part of the DNA which gets transcribed and forms mRNAs and that we call gene expression. And that is how gene is expressed. But you know, this concept is actually incorrect. We cannot visualize genes like only a part of the DNA. Because inside of a cell, two things matter. First of all, the phase of the cell cycle we are talking about. Because every phase of the cell cycle, gene expression does not happen. So cell cycle is just like our life cycle. So every phase of our life cycle, we are no, not so active. Cell is also not so transcriptionally active at every phase of the cell cycle. So we have to understand which cell cycle phase we are talking about. And also, at that point of time, what is the status of the chromatin? What is the compaction status of the chromatin? So gene is a part of chromatin. The bigger picture is the chromatin. So we cannot imagine gene a part of DNA only. We have to imagine gene as a part of chromatin. So the better picture is something like this. So we can understand the cells, the, uh, the cells, the nucleus is transcriptionally active in interface where the chromatin landscape is relatively relaxed and the, the cells are transcriptionally active. Whereas when the cells need to segregate its chromosome, they are in a rush hour and they need to pack their DNA properly. At that stage, the typical metaphysic chromosome that we have in our mind is highly condensed. It is transcriptionally inactive. No transcription happens from a compacted metaphysic chromosome. So which phase of the cell cycle we are talking about or thinking about is very important. Second of all, if we talk about a gene, let's say a length of 1 KB, we cannot imagine a blunt picture of only DNA and a segment of the DNA spanning 1 KB. Because along with DNA, there is histone, which is forming the nucleosome bead on a string arrangement. So if the gene length is 1 KB and one nucleosome length is roughly 200 base pairs, so at least there would be 5 histones, five nucleosomes along with the DNA. So that is how we can visualize a gene in our mind. So the DNA is compacted in a several levels. First level is like only DNA. That's, that is how a micrograph of DNA look like. It's like 0.1 to 1 nanometer structure. Whereas the nucleosome is a level 2 comp compaction, which is a 1 to 10 nanometer fiber. Whereas a higher order compaction is a chromatin fiber. With increase of complexity and compaction, the chromosome is losing its ability to transcribe or give rise to functional mRNAs. Now, along with histones, the DNAs make a compact chroma chromosome, which kind of look like this, and this is literally inactive for transcription. So, let us look at how this histone octamer forms. So the histone H3 and H4 forms H3, H4 dimer, whereas H2 and 2B forms H2, A, 2B dimer. And that forms H3, 4 tetramer and H and H3, 4 tetramer interact with H2, A, 2B dimer to form a core histone octamer. And that core histone octamer is wrapped around by the DNA. Now, DNA backbone is negatively charged. Histone has multiple positive residues, mostly lysine and arginine. So there is an ionic interaction. Apart from ionic interaction, there are hydrogen bonding between them. So that is how DNA is wrapped around these histones in a chromatin fiber. So now you can understand why this kind of picture shown here could be incorrect to understand. So, we can, so the UK, in eukaryotes, the transcription or the gene expression is pretty complicated because, first of all, the RNA polymerase and its associated general transcription factors of transcription factor 2 family is a huge complex. And that complex need to be recruited in the promoter 
and now RNA polymerase has to scan through the whole span of that nucleosome provided there is a huge amount of obstacle in its path so we can imagine that in a compact situation it's literally impossible for the trans the RNA polymerase to run along the length of a gene so somehow it need to be loosened up a bit such that RNA pol can move and can be released from the promoter and can move along the gene body and transcribing the mRNA so the transition between a closed chromatin to open chromatin is important but how does this switch happens it turns out there are specific histone modifiers and nucleosome remodeling complexes which can bring about these changes histone modifiers can modify the histone and can alter the degree of interaction between the DNA and histone and thereby can modulate the compaction of the nucleosomes but as nucleosome remodeling complex can slide the nucleosomes away or increase the gap between the nucleosome and thereby reorganizing the chromatin landscape in an ATP dependent manner so together these kind of modifiers and remodeling complexes can alter the chromatin landscape and thereby aiding in gene expression processes and also nucleosome remodeling complex can either uh, change the spacing between the nu uh, nucleosomes or it can slide it and also it can replace with a histone with a specific histone variant and it has been seen with the active chromatin there are signature histones which are associated with an active transcriptionally active chromatin so that is how we should think about a gene in a holistic chromatin landscape manner not a isolated part of a dna and also there are other cis regulatory dna elements which aids in the degree of transcription and how transcription would be happening from the promoter and those are enhancer sequence where specific transcription factor binds and in coordination with coactivator or co-depressor it regulate how uh, the transcription would happen from the promoter region so if you like my video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel thank you